He's made a name for himself with his many cameo appearances in films and television shows. In fact, um, has become known for his small parts. So welcome, if you will, <laughs> Dom Irera, ladies and gentlemen. The thing about Drew is we all really do like him. And it's very hard in a way. I was <laughs> Drew up the <laughs> one day, right? <laughs> Not in a gay way, like a Viking. And I, and I had... That's a true story, Larry. Stop me if you heard this. I had my hands on the horns on his helmet, you know? And, oh, uh, we, we go back, you know? And I'm thinking one day, till this day, when he you, it's not like... Seriously, it's not like, you know, like he hasn't changed. He, st he does it with the enthusiasm of, like, like he, when he just went to Hollywood. And that... Like, he'll do that little thing with his tongue at the end of your... Not like a f like a real man. The way he, he just it right off. Seriously, folks. I mean, this is the kind of guy he is. He, the, imp the important thing, ladies and gentlemen, is that we all got together tonight, and, and you know, we, we learned by this that, that lesbianism, uh, it, to me, is one of the most beautiful things in the world. Because there anything more beautiful than two beautiful women together? Maybe two beautiful women plus me, right at the end. <laughs> It's a beautiful, I mean, to see two ladies like that. Have you ever been with two women? <laughs> Seriously, have you ever been with two women? I can't remember. <laughs> I love you. Love is the most beautiful thing in the world. To make love is such a beautiful thing, especially to do it with another person, huh? <laughs> and for free, which is always a nice touch. Instead of one of those stupid dolls I wasted my money on, $25, all the oil squirting all over the room, that little cabbage patch slut. <laughs> You laughed, but I loved. And I know what it's like to love an inanimate object. I was married for five years. I would say to my wife, you don't have to fake orgasm, just fake consciousness. At least come in the house. <laughs> Why do they have to ruin even to make love? The arrogant, big-mouthed husband who is at work, Mr. Macho, Mr. Machismo, Mr. Big, Hairy, Inflated, Twisted, Rug Burn, Scrotum of Love. He says, I have to go home to pork my wife. What kind of talk is this to pork a person? To booger my babe, to hump my honey, to lay some pipe, to hide the salami, to bury the bone, to stuff the donut, to moisten the wick, to shoot the sherbet, to slam the ham, to slap the monkey, to yodel in the mighty, fairy, festering, stinky, yeast-filled canyon of love, to dine at the Y, to munch on the rug, to flog the dolphin, to beat the bishop, to smack little Johnny behind his German helmet and purple bulbous ear, to whack Willy Wonka into Wonderland, to do the five-knuckle shuffle, to paddle the wrong way up the Hershey Highway, to... You know... Thank you. See, Drew comes from a circus family. A lot of people don't know. His, his parents were midget clowns. And I don't know what the politically correct thing, little funny people. His <laughs> funny little midgety, clowny... Anyway, I read the book, and it was something that needed to be written, really. It really was. It, it, it's, it's, a kind of, it's a good thing, because a lot of times I can't sleep. I take out that book, and in a minute, I am out like a light. <laughs> Thanks for having me on your road. Love you, Drew. Love you, party. According to some, Dave Attell is one of the brightest comedy minds in our country today. To others, he's nothing more than a heavily armed drifter with a good sense of humor. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, if you will, Dave Attell. Thank you. Thank you. Hello. Thanks for coming. Really, thank you. Ladies, gentlemen, suck-ups, thanks for coming down to honor a very great man. You know, I started crying today, mostly because I sat on my balls, but also... Because it's not often you get this much talent together outside of a Cannonball Run reunion. Or a Poseidon adventure, the next generation. The good times we've had, I really can't talk about them. Because I can only really remember one time, and that was in San Antonio, Texas. I was coming off stage to the word, you suck, in English and Spanish. And who was sitting there? Drew, buying me drinks, telling me it would be all right. And I thought, hey, he might be gay. 
two years later, Mr. Las Vegas TV show. There's Drew on stage with Wayne Newton playing the trumpet, farting out the Pledge of Allegiance. And I said, look at that talent. And then I knew I was gay. Now, people give the man a hard time for what? Whoring around? Can't the boy have a good time? You read his book, all the terrible things that happened, like Little House on the Prairie and you know, no food and somebody's fat and no tree. Or I didn't. I thumbed it. All right. <laughs> something happened there. You have a dog died. Something. All right. Let him enjoy himself. So he goes to a strip club. Why to see a naked woman? He does not need to pay to see a naked woman. He's there for the music. All right, everyone. <laughs> and we all know what your favorite song is, and that would be your b slapping against a hooker's ass. <laughs> got a great beat, and it always makes you hungry. Now, <laughs> but this is what I want to tell you, Drew. I'm just glad for men like you, because if it wasn't for guys like you, women like that wouldn't guys like me. So thank you, and thank you all. Kipadada. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. So this evening on the way in, uh, a lot of people mistook me for Drew Carey, which goes to prove the old adage that if you live together long enough, <laughs> you begin to look alike. You see, ladies and gentlemen, Drew Carey and I are lovers and have been for 11 years. I met Drew in Tijuana, where he was ponies in a small nightclub. <laughs> It was my job to stand by with a fire hose just in case they got stuck together. <laughs> Drew Carey is a consummate showman, and even though he hated <laughs> ponies, to watch the show, you'd never know it. <laughs> After the show one night, Drew came to me, he said, Kip, I've always wondered what it'd be like to have sex with a man. And I said, you know, Drew, I've always wondered what it'd be like to have sex with a man. So yes, ladies and gentlemen, we had sex. He did what he, did what he wanted to do, and I did what I wanted to do, and then when we were all done, he wanted to cuddle. <laughs> so we moved north. <laughs> Drew found work at a poultry farm, taking blind turkeys out to <laughs> And they couldn't have found a better man for the job <laughs> because Drew Carey is very, very careful. <laughs> Even back then, he practiced safe sex. I'll never forget the day you told me to go out and tag all the sheep that kicked. <laughs> Some people thought we were weird. But I say if what you do does not hurt you and does not hurt me, I have no right to judge you for it. Like I'll never forget the time Drew and I, we put salt on our rear ends <laughs> and drove out to that petting zoo. <laughs> well, I'm laying in the grass and I'm thinking to myself, I'm thinking, who's the victim here? <laughs> the animals were delighted. I had a marvelous time. <laughs> oh, we've had our fights. I remember one time I told him, with that attitude, you can untie yourself. But I'm going to say something about Drew Carey. Drew Carey is a kind and 
generous man. It's my pleasure to pay tribute to him in loving disrespect. And I have a gift for him, a nice, long, thick cigar with the wrapper still on it, which is the way he likes it. 